Yes, you guys, welcome back. Tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. UK time, we have the London Derby game against Fulham. With the pressure that Lampard has been under, we've had some very erratic results this past month. And naturally, fans are demanding and expecting some improvement in the team. With the fact that we finally had some time for Lampard to prepare the team and work on things in training, tomorrow's game is that perfect opportunity to win the London Derby bring some confidence back and hopefully kickstart our season again so we climb up the table. Fulham under Scott Parker are no easy opponents with their current form. They've gone five games unbeaten and regardless of the fact that they've been five draws, they've picked up impressive results against Liverpool, Southampton and recently Tottenham. However, with no loftus cheek in the team, with no Lamina, with no Kearney, and considering they played an intense game recently against Spurs, considering we're ninth place in the league, Tomorrow really is the perfect game to kickstart our season again, rise up the table, get those points. And today's match preview, I'm going to break down Lampard's press conference. I'm going to go through my predicted lineups that I think Lampard may pick in tomorrow's game. And for the final segment, I have one of special guests in Son of Chelsea, where we're going to speak about some things Lampard can do to get us that win in tomorrow's game. So I hope you guys do enjoy. Remember, big day of content today. I've released a big news daily video, so I hope you guys do enjoy. And without wasting any more time, let's get straight into things by dissecting Lampard and his recent press conference. Now, for the first time in a very long time, Lampard has had a full week to work with the team, build on things, and this has been the first time since the international break all the way back in mid-November. So naturally, all of us fans are expected to see some progress made with the understanding of the system. Anyway, we kickstart the press conference and Lampard does reveal that Reese James has been training with the team, meaning that he is going to be in contention for the game tomorrow. Now, for me personally, this is exciting news because it's been a long time since I've seen Ziyech and Reese James combining now that right hand side and considering their creativity and their ability, this is going to bring a massive advantage back to the team. Frank used this press conference as an opportunity to remind the team of the importance of getting the sprint tomorrow. He said the team will be up for this London derby and expressed disappointment that the fans won't be in the stadium to spur the team on. And Lampard did confirm that over the past two weeks, over the two weeks where he's had more time to work on the team's tactical understanding and improve elements of the system, my impression was was that Lampard is feeling optimistic about the team's understanding of the system. Now when asked about our historically good form against Fulham, Lampard denied that record, respecting the form and threat that Fulham have been playing with over these past few games. They played well against Liverpool, they played well against Spurs. Focus is needed to ensure the win in tomorrow's game. Now for me, Lampard really emphasised the importance of having two weeks worth of training sessions to improve the elements of the team. Frank said that last season when there was a pre-season, when there was more time to have training sessions to improve things, the team really benefited from those periods. And as I keep saying, for me, he really re-emphasised the point of the importance of having time for training in this recent period. And for me, I'm optimistic and hopeful that the team are going to show us something in tomorrow's game. But the final two questions talk turn towards Team Ivana, with Lampard emphasising that due to coming to a new league, not having enough time to understand his teammates too, Team O is going to need more time until he's fully maximised within the team. Me personally, I would add the fact that back in Germany last season, there was a winter break and Team Ivana had none for this season. So for me, even though he came for big money, he's still at an age where he's still learning, improving. And to be honest, when he signed for us, this was something Vernon himself really emphasised about wanting to challenge himself and playing towards a higher level. And to end things, Lampard confirmed that Tamori still has a future at this club. But if you guys want to hear the latest in regards to Tamori, the news that came out today, I have released a news daily video. Make sure you guys give that a watch if you haven't. And now, let's take things forward to the predictor lineup part for the video today. I'm going to be using two different possible formations. And for both formations, they are going to be a 4 3 3. And that's based on the fact that Lampard has been emphasizing a lot that. He wants the team to improve their understanding in the system. And the whole point of the predicted lineup is to make the best guesstimations in regards to what team Lampard may possibly play. Now, for the first lineup, it's pretty identical to the lineup that beat Morecambe. Up front, I've gone for Werner, 
I've gone for Hudson Odoi on the left hand side. I think with the form he's showing, this is a great opportunity for Callum to really just test himself in the league and against Fulham. Now comes at the perfect time. And of course, to complete the front three, it has to be Hakim Ziyech. Every time he plays, he's creating something. He's taking responsibility. He's providing a different attacking asset to the team. And in the midfield three, I've gone for Mason, I've gone for Kai, and I've gone for Billy Gilmore. Now, Kai Havertz is someone, as I said, I was hoping to have this video out by this week. I have not been able to. It's been so long, it's getting taken down. It's going to need more time, you guys. But again, what I'm going to stress is pay attention to how Kai moves off the ball. And of course, with Gilmore, naturally, we need someone in the base midfield that can be that metronome, that can just quickly move the ball. It's really important to find these guys between the lines. And you guys, to complete the lineup, I've gone for Ben Chilwell, Silva, Zuma, Reese James back in the team has been one of our best players this season and Mendy in goal. Now for the second lineup, again, I've gone for a 4-3-3, but with this lineup, I've gone for Werner down the left-hand side. I've gone for Tammy up front. I've gone for Ziyech down the right. In midfield, I've gone for Jorginho. I've gone for Mounts and I've gone for Kai. And in defense, as you guys can see, Ben, Zuma, Silva, Reese James and Mendy. But my main thinking with this lineup is that maybe Lampard may be considering, okay, Fulham, they played some intense games recently. This could be an opportunity to give more minutes to other players in preparation for future games. So against Fulham, who are expected to play very defensively off the ball, maybe Jorginho could be used as an option. If he did play, then I'd assume that Gilmore is being prioritised for the Leicester City game. And up front, I've gone for Tammy Abraham because, again, for me, uh, the way he plays, his importance in leading the line, stretching the play, he brings so many different facets to the team and, most importantly, with his movement off the ball, it does allow for Werner to make those late arrivals inside the box. And let's not forget, during the start of the season, Werner was constantly winning penalties, he was constantly being involved, running through those channels, breaking the lines, and I think with more time, that is something that could improve upon. But anyway, they were my two predicted lineups, you guys. And now, you guys, we end things with the final segment. Today, I'm joined by a special guest in Son of Chelsea. Hey, man, how you doing? And to get straight into things, tomorrow against Fulham, what are three things that you want to see and three things you feel can give us that win in tomorrow's game? Uh, first thing is just sharpness in our play. Um, I feel it's been too slow recently, so I want to see that back in, in the team. And that follows on to number two, because I think having Ziyech back on the right, I think is a big thing. And, and if I can cheat a bit, having Reese and, and, and Ziyech in the team, I think is massive for the way we attack, the massive, massive for the way we try and progress to ball up the pitch um, and, and get into attacking areas. So I think both of those, I, I think it'll be massive for the game against Fulham. And thirdly, um, I want to see Billy Gilmore start because I think he deserves it. And, and I think that in terms of not having Kante and that midfield and feeling that we're, we're not progressing the ball as, as well as we should be, I think Billy can offer that mix of progressive passing, sharp one-two touch play. You know, when he gets the ball, he knows what to do with it. He wants to move it quickly and usually forward. Um, and also maybe that mobility that Jor Jorginho just can't offer you in that role. Yeah, I think there are three things that are definitely going to help us towards getting that win tomorrow. I'm, in particular, I'm looking down that right hand side. Ziyech and Reese James, they have not played as many games together, but you get the sense that once they just clock more than 10, 15 games under their belts together, yeah. they're understanding their relationship is going to grow even more. And I do feel like they provide some excellent creativity down that right hand side. But anyway, let's quickly speak about Timo Werner. Timo Werner most likely is going to be playing in tomorrow's game, mm. especially after the comments that Lampard had for him. And in your opinion, how do you feel about Werner? Do you feel that maybe Lampard is persisting a bit too much? It's time for Samuel Giroud? Or do you see that maybe we have to persist with Werner a bit longer to get the best out of him? It's tough because people have been arguing for weeks that play Werner up top as a central striker, but then I hear instantly play Giroud up there. And it's like, well... What do you want? Do you want that sort of consistency of, of team that, you know, you're, you're going to trust Werner in that central role, which we really haven't done a lot this season and try and see if he can start to build some chemistry up there and sort of form and, and he fills that sort of space and, and, and does well there? Or do you want to keep on chopping and changing the forwards? I think it's difficult for Frank because he's got three strikers that only, not only give him three distinct options, but especially in the case of Giroud and Tammy have been pretty good this year. You know, Olivier Giroud yeah. is Chelsea's top goal scorer. So for me, I feel quite conflicted not having Giroud in the first team. Um, but the thing that does lean me in a direction I think that Timo will start is because Frank started him against Morecambe. 
you know, I think that team to me looked very, I think, especially in the, in a, in the attacking areas, looked to me like a team that could start against Fulham. Um, and I think it's imperative that we get Werner playing again, you know, start scoring again. There's a reason we spent as much money as we did on him um, and hopefully we'll start to persist with him. I do get the sense that, and the great thing for Frank this year is he does have those options off the bench of Tammy and Giroud or, or just in other games where maybe he wants to rotate a bit. So I don't think it's the worst case, but I just think for this game, he'll likely give it to Timo because he backed him against Morecambe. Yeah, I, I really agree with that. Um, you know, we can't forget too that when Timo first signed in the interviews he first had with the club, he really spoke about wanting to improve his overall game. So when we signed him, we never signed him knowing that he was a world-class striker immediately. We signed him knowing that with time playing in this new system and getting used to his new teammates, he could be a very effective part of the team. And even though he hasn't shown his abilities all the time, we've still seen his attacking threat considering the goal contributions made by him this season, the amount of penalties, yeah. some of the you know goals he's scoring first, which I think is important for a striker. You want them to lead. And you know, I do think with more time, we'll see the best out of Timo Werner personally. But to end things, man, with two final questions. First question is, who was one player to watch in tomorrow's game? Uh, for me, it's going to be Hakim Ziyech. I, I could have said Hudson Odoi because I think he deserves a start, but I think Ziyech, to me, especially against uh, defences that are going to sit deep, uh, you saw earlier in the season how well we coped with that, with Ziyech in the team. You know, you think about the Sheffield United game, amazing individual performance, Burnley away as well. I even think Newcastle, some of those games. So I think that now Ziyech is back, I think he's going to have a few man of the match performances and I think it begins at Craven Cottage so I'm going to go with Ziyech on that one that's very interesting for me I'm going to go for Kai Havertz because I do think that everyone should pay attention to his movement off the ball I think you know really pay attention to how he moves and to end things man your score projection for the game tomorrow I'm going to go 2-0. Uh, Fulham have been resilient recently. They're unbeaten in, I think, five or six Premier League games going into this one. They've had some brilliant draws against Liverpool, Spurs and Southampton. So to expect this to be a walkover and just to be easy for Chelsea, it's not going to be. Um, but I do think that Chelsea, now having some key players back in key positions, I think is going to be essential. And it's it's a must-win game for Chelsea. So it's time for those players and for Frank to show up, you know, and, and to prove that that good run earlier in the season isn't just a fluke. You know, there is something substantial there and it's about getting right back on course with three points at Grover Cottage. So I'll go 2-0 Chelsea. I'm a bit more ambitious. I think we could get three. I feel like it's about time we start mm. pumping teams again. And now we've got fully fit players against the Fulham team. That's a bit tired after their recent game against Spurs. I think that is a perfect time. But anyway, Sonna Chelsea, thank you for coming on. And of course, you guys, thank you for watching the videos today. I hope you guys enjoyed the match preview. Of course, I have released a new daily video today breaking down the big stories. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.